All right, folks, it's Jake here from Metal Wani, and we're here with the legendary Paul Mazurkowitz from Cannibal Corpse. Paul, how are you going today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to have you here. Now, firstly, I'd like to start off and congratulate you on the impending release of your upcoming 15th studio album, Violence Unimagined. I'm sure it must be surreal each time you guys get to release a new album. Well, thank you very much, and yeah, it is, uh, you know, crazy to think. Here we've been around 32 years, and right, about to release the number 15. It's just, uh, you know, pretty pretty remarkable, pretty pretty crazy to think that uh, that this all happened and is still going on and going strong, so we're, uh, you know, feel very appreciative of that, of course, you know, but yeah, a little surreal at moments. Yeah, very nice, very nice. And I, I do want to start off, I guess, before we look forward, looking back a little bit and, I guess, ahead of the release of your last album, Red Before Black, you yourself had alluded to the fact that the band had worked extra hard and you felt that that was the best album that the band had put out. How did the band approach Violence Unimagined to ensure that you built on those foundations from Red Before Black? Well, I think, you know, just kind of instilling the same kind of, uh, you know, uh, work ethic, really. Just, you know, work work hard, work harder, you know, just keep pushing. Um, uh, you know, this one was maybe a little more little more difficult in a lot of ways. Um, I think we had, we had maybe, you know, just a little less time than we're normally allotted, you know. So kind of getting, a, getting the material done, you know, albeit maybe it was only like a month or so, you know, but a month is a big time, you know, um, many days um, that, uh, you know, you, you, you're not prepared or you have less time to prepare so uh, so so called but uh but at the same time it's you know gives you it just kind of pushes even more right you know so um and i i found myself in particular um really really just having to you know go that extra mile really push a little harder um you know knowing that uh, you know time is a little of the essence and you know you got to get these songs together and these are hard songs you know i think these these songs in general are a little more difficult than um you know the songs uh, on Red Before Black to be to perform. You know physically, uh, for me, anyways. So uh, you know, so it was just really a lot of practice, a lot of you know extra practice, and just you know plugging away every day. And uh, you know, but like I said, that's you know kind of what we've been doing, of course. But I, I just you know, I, th I just think as it goes, you, you know, you know, I don't know. Maybe in the back of your mind, you're knowing you know, you know how much, how many albums we got left, how many you know how many how many years do we got left, how much time do we got left. You just, just got to do the best you can do and uh you know and really make the best uh album that you can at, the, at that given times like i said especially since yeah you know it's obvious we're at the you know more at the latter end of our career than the beginning you know so uh so you know really just you know just keep pushing hard and uh you know, just do the best we can, you know. I guess that's a good philosophy to have, so it is very good to hear. Now, you guys do have a new guitarist in Eric Rutan. Uh, I know he's produced four of your records in the past, five if you count this one now, um, but what has it been like having him around more closely uh, and also contributing to the album? What sort of a fit does he bring to Cannibal Corpse in terms of his guitar playing? Yeah, I mean, it's a great guitar player of course great guy great you know great asset of you know i mean can't say enough about him he's an amazing you know person and and you know set a great musician so so having of course the skill that he has on guitar it's just it's you know incredible right um you know i mean and i and you know the main thing of course is him just bringing his version of cannibal corpse you know to his songwriting um, you know, he wrote three songs on the record, and and those were songs he wrote individually. You know, if you know anything about the band these days, that's kind of how we work for the most part. You know, uh, everybody just kind of coming up with their material on their own, and uh, you know, and Eric was no different. So he, uh, you know, he's just kind of bringing that you know a little bit of a different uh, flavor to the to the band now. Um, uh, you know, writing writing uh, Cannibal Corpse style Eric Rutan riffs. You know, obviously he's a great songwriter and he's been doing it for years. And you know, but but right, he's been doing Hate Eternal and you know, done Morbid Angel. So 
you know, now, now it's his turn to, uh, you know, to, to write some Cannibal Corpse songs. So I think it was, you know, it was exciting for him, of course, and it was exciting for us just to have some, some, you know, fresh new blood like that and some, you know, new ideas and, you know, uh, you know, it, it, to, it, to be, like I said, Eric's take on what, you know, what Cannibal Corpse is to him, you know, and, uh, so that was, that was cool and it's great to have. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, just having them in general, right. We've worked with them in the studio, of course, you know, so we, we already have that relationship going for many albums, like you said, and then, uh, you know, then we got to, uh, obviously, you know, we've toured with them in the past, but, you know, of course, him being in the band to share the stage with us, to be playing live with us, you know, for a bunch of tours in, in you know, 2019, um, you know, we got to work with him in that way, and then exactly now having him as a member of the band and contributing in the creative department has been amazing, and, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun, and, uh, you know, I think the fans are really going to, you know, dig what Eric brings to the table. Yeah, and I do want to, I guess, go back to a comment that you made earlier on about how you sort of pushed yourself a little bit to the uh, to the extreme with this album and sort of tie it back into uh, a comment that you mentioned just then with Eric writing the three songs. Um, obviously, his uh, particular style of writing throughout his other bands requires some very technically challenging drumming. Um was that a, a factor in helping you to sort of push yourself to the limits on these songs on Violence Unimagined? Yeah, a little bit, of course. I mean, Eric, uh, especially in the two songs he wrote, he wrote the three, but the two in particular, Over Torture and Ritual Annihilation, are very, you know, they were definitely a little more in the speed department, you know. And, um, you know, not over technical in any of the drumming per se, but just but but just the relentless speed kind of, you know, haven't done that in a, in a little while, it seems, you know. So I, I really uh, felt that I had to kind of build my stamina up, you know, to be able to, you know, to tackle those two songs in particular because of the you know the intensity and the in the you know the tempos i guess um and then um his other song condemnation contagion yeah that was you know that definitely has some tricky mental things happening here you know syncopated drums in the beginning it was very difficult to kind of like uh, you know wrap my head around a little bit at first you know i mean nothing fast of course but i mean it doesn't have to be you know a lot of times more it's the mental aspect that's uh, you know kind of gets me you know get you know, throws me for a loop and really drives me nuts until i you know can you know get it in my head and and uh, get a feel for it you know so uh you know because that was the other good thing about it um you know the way we write and and the way eric writes he, he kind of like writes like how alex does he kind of comes up with his his drum parts for the songs because he's writing the song he knows what he wants for the drums and you know obviously i i play as close to what those guys come up with you know maybe some things change a little bit you know some fills or what have you or but overall i want to try to keep uh you know keep what they came up with in the drumming department so uh so it was uh you know it's definitely a challenge having to learn that way for me because um you know it might be something that i wouldn't have thought of or wouldn't have done and then i have to obviously uh, you know wrap my head around what they're doing and uh, eventually get it of course but it makes it a little more a little more challenging to to do it those ways but you know then uh, but then again it makes it that much more diverse especially in the drumming department you know um so uh uh, yeah, so Eric definitely, uh, you know, kept me on my toes on this record for sure on, on the three songs that he wrote, and that's a good thing. Yeah, it is definitely a good thing. So I guess over the last 12 months, 2020, it's been a hard year for many with a lot of bands of taking the time to head into the studio and record new music, yourselves uh, included. Um, a lot of that music that I've heard coming out has had emotion uh, related into it um, from the pandemic and also the current political environments in various places around the world. Did any of those factors influence the writing process at all or did you guys just go into it thinking we want to write the most brutal record that we've written? Yeah, I mean, you know, we usually don't let anything on the outside affect us in any way, you know, lyrically or musically, you know, it's just going to, the music's going to come from within, basically, no matter what, and, you know, kind of weird or crazy how it all went down, especially in the in the music department where, um, you know, we were pretty much ready to go into the studio when the pandemic hit, you know, that we were just wrapping up our writing session and just kind of getting the pre-production and all the pre preparations for going into the studio so when, when it hit in march of uh of last year we were 
uh, and we were on schedule. We were, you know, going in in April. So it was like, okay, everything's done. You know, that was all done technically pre pandemic, you know, um, what, whatever we written musically, some of the lyrics always come a little later. So, but you know, then again, right. We're, we're, we're not a political band. We're not a, you know, band that really touches too much on current events or of anything. You know, we've have a couple in there and, and actually the only thing that probably did kind of maybe uh, push along uh, in that in that way was Eric's song "Condemnation Contagion." I think he kind of loosely based that of what was happening at the time. You know, like okay, yeah, this is crazy. This is you know messed up. This is you know pretty horrific in its own way. You know, so I'm. Um, You'd have to, to really ask him on that, but I, I believe that it was, you know, loosely based on what's happening with the pandemic, the, the lyrics anyways, like I said. Yeah. Um, so, so, but, but right. Other than that, you know, we kind of, I, I think we're just um, not immune to what's happening, but, you know, we just, you know, we just do our thing, you know, we're a death metal band and we're a, you know, a, a horrific, straightforward gore kind of band that just writes fictional stories of course you know for the most part so and uh you know we just we just want to keep churning that out no matter what's kind of happening around us and uh and i think that's what's kept uh, our identity and you know what's made us you know be who we are we stick true to what we do and 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 you know don't follow trends or you know don't you know, like i said don't, don't really uh, reflect on it in our music and lyrics what's happening at the times you know yeah. i mean we're just going to do what we do Yep. So obviously touring is a bit up in the air at the moment, but does the band have any plans on getting out on the road again in the near future, obviously when they're able to? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody wants to get out as soon as they can, right? You know, I mean, we should have been out, the album should have been out back in November and we'd be on the road, right? You know, so um, that's an important uh, key uh, element of being in the band here for most bands. You know, you got to get out on the road and, you know, it's of course become our, our business and our, our livelihood and our careers and, you know, what brings in our, you know, our, our finances, right? You know, so we need to be out there. It's not, it's not helping uh, um, so I think we just got to take it day by day. I mean, there's really nothing set right now. I mean, you know, you, you, you see what I see of, you know, tours getting canceled and, you know, talk of tours happening maybe at the end of the year, seeing a little bit, and then, you know, next year things are going on. Well, you know, who knows if that's going to happen. You, you would hope it would, especially with, you know, everything the way it's, uh, you know, panning out right now in the world. But, uh, you know, we just got to take it day by day and see what happens. But, you know, hopefully uh, sooner than later we're out, you know. You know, because uh, I think people, like you know, said everybody wants to be out, but I think uh, obviously people need the music and they want to see shows. You know, bands want to play, so so hopefully that happens soon. Yeah, and I guess I'll, I want to sort of continue along in that vein. Like, has Cannibal Corpse maybe thought of holding like an album release stream or a performance, maybe a pay per view event that fans worldwide can tune into? I I know a few bands have released albums in a similar fashion over the last twelve months, but I guess I was just wondering if that's something that cannibal corpse had considered yeah i think everybody considers it you know i mean but we've considered it but it's just not our, it's really just not us i mean right now so it's 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 definitely not going to happen um but you know there's a, you always got to you know have those considerations and 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 see what, what what could work and what's you know the best for everybody but but yeah in the in the end we we deemed it to you know it just wasn't going to happen so so we're just going to take it as we take it here, you know, put the album out and, uh, you know, do the normal promotion that you would do, you know, like we're doing, of course, release a song, video and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll just wait to be playing when we can play live, I guess, at this point. Yeah, that's fair enough. Now, I do have one final question for you, Paul. Uh, and. I guess it's a very reflective one. You've been fortunate to be an integral player in the death metal genre for over three decades. Uh, you're part of one of the biggest bands for the genre during that time. What would, what would you say has been the key success factor for the band over the years? Uh, kind of what I stated a little earlier, just, you know, doing what we do, you know, we're, we're, we're a band that stayed true to what we started. Um, you know, we, we're Cannibal Corpse and we always wanted to be. And, uh, you know, that's what got us kind of going, of course, just being who we are, writing the songs we do, having the attitude we have. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, you know, and then luckily our fans, uh, great fan base, 
growing throughout the you know the years and throughout the whole world and all that. So uh, you know we're I think we're a band that, that that they can count on. You know they know what to expect. I mean it's going to be Cannibal Corpse. I mean albeit it might be a little slightly different than the last. You know I mean we've you know we've done those kind of little minor subtle changes over the years, but at the same time it's always Cannibal Corpse. So so you know I think we, we just worked hard and stayed in the public eye. You know and just never went away. Just uh, you know keep pushing. We're on the road all the time i mean you know and then obviously i think it's good that you have to um you know to be able to um you know put out some songs people want to hear i mean when it comes down to it it's just music right you know and you know if, if you write good music i guess you know people are going to want to hear it and and want to follow it and want more you know so i think we've been fortunate that we were able to um you know just uh, write some good songs some good death metal songs over the years and uh you know being able to keep our our you know fans interested and uh you know that's a, that's an important uh the most important probably aspect you know because it all, like i said it all comes down to the music so yeah wonderful paul thank you so much for your time we've got violence unimagined coming out next month and it's going to be really good to see a lot of the fans reactions when they get their hands onto it Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You know, I can't wait for the fans to hear it as well. And, uh, you know, thank you. Thanks again for the interview.